What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing coming back at you with another video and today this is part two of trying to figure out what the heck is going on with this tank. I got cyano, I got um, some hair algae in it and I'm not really sure what to do. So I'm going to go over some ICP testing and I'll let you know exactly what my thought process is. Let's get started. You ready Daniel? Yeah! And I got a new algae scraper. No more metal algae scrapers. Definitely not. We'll do a review on this later. Alright guys, so here are my ICP test results. Um, as you can see when I'm scrolling down, I wanted to see my different types of uh, metals. I thought there were going to be tons of different metals in my tank. So as you can look at this, all my unwanted heavy metals are within almost undetectable ranges. Aluminum is even low and that's 0 to 60. So I have no unwanted metals. I totally thought I'd have like some copper, maybe some tungsten, I don't know um, as far as most of these heavy metals because I thought it was due to the um, blade from the tank. Now when I look at my macro elements, these are the ones I've been testing. The ICP analysis came back at 4, 442 and my current testing that I did was 430. My magnesium I tested at 4 or 1440 and it came back at 1420 so my hobby grade test gets more than 10 percent of my icp results which mm -hmm. gives me tons mm -hmm. of confidence in my testing you know everything is in um, an acceptable range you need to kind of boost strontium but that's about it lithium group now i do have high lithium and i've been trying to look to see what what is actually going on with the lithium group but i don't think it's too um out there i'm just going to do a water change and fix it molybdenum is a little bit low might want to get a little bit uh, in the system but overall here's the iron group I totally thought like chromium or iron or cobalt would be in there nothing um, barium beryllium silicon um, a little high but not too high and the water change will take care of that and same with the phosphorus and phosphate everything is showing that it is solid so pretty much what I need to do is I, I'm looking at the tank I'm breaking down my analysis I'm pretty sure that it is not a chemistry problem, it is not a water problem, it is a biological problem. So I need to tackle this with biology, not chemistry. So as you can see, based off of everything on that Triton ICP testing, all my levels look good. Not really sure what the heck is going on with the tank. I thought it was a razor blade, I thought some contaminants got in here, but it's clearly not that. Right Daniel, you said it. I don't know what it is. So, instead of being a chemical solution, I think it's more a biological solution. So, let's look at the tank. Ready? Yes! Yes, let's look at the tank and say yes! Mm. Oh. Well, this looks absolutely rough. So, you can see how I have some cyano growing on the sand bed. Maybe some coming up here. But on the back glass, there's just a little bit of hair algae. So. Because I have some cyan, and you can kind of see it's kind of taken over a little areas, I've increased the flow, I've increased the filtration because I thought that it was too many nitrates in the system or overfeeding, and I've kind of come to the conclusion that this hair algae and cyan is due to a biological imbalance in the tank. Now with that being said, it is very important to have a reef log. So let me show you this reef log. I, I keep pretty much everything in this binder right here and I can tell exactly when things are going bad and this is the most important thing so what I think happened was I cleaned up the sump on the 10th of October and I took out the Kato after I took out the Kato I was like oh yeah I'm kind of done cleaning that stuff I noticed maybe a little bit of hair algae so I dosed just a tad of vibrant so I can almost equate this to the Kato being out and then I had the bubblegum digi not looking good so I realized, oh crap, I did the goo off, so I put in Purit, and then I started noticing, you know, probably some hair algae around um, November. So I started noticing hair algae, it started getting bad, moved rats over, you know, put the rats in the tank. So around December, you know, 25th, I'm starting to see some cyano. The hair algae is still bad, you know, still dosing vibrant, not seeing a bunch of changes, still dosing vibrant. And then we are up here for today. So now I'll try and test, I got it back. And you guys saw the results of it. 
So a lot of people were complaining that I wasn't giving out the um, parameters, which I put in the description, but I didn't mention it. I have 35.5 uh, PPT for salinity, 8.6 or 8.3 um, alkalinity, 430 calcium, 1440 magnesium, zero nitrate, and 0 0.06 phosphate. So really bad, uh, low nutrients, but every other parameter is good. This is a biological problem. I decided to go with ChemiClean. So I'm going to dose ChemiClean to this tank. This is Friday. I'm going to do all the ChemiClean instructions and I would recommend you look at it on the back right here if you want to pause the video. But I won't go over how to use ChemiClean because you guys can read. Now, um, also keep in mind, use fresh carbon whenever you're doing this at the very end. So follow their directions. Definitely use fresh carbon. Don't be dumb like me and not use fresh carbon. So I'm going to dose ChemiClean to this tank following the directions and then on Sunday, I'm going to do a huge water change. Probably, you know, definitely more than 20 gallons. I'm probably going to do 40 to 60 gallon water change. So I took out the carbon, adjusted the protein skimmer, started more bubbles in the tank with my aeration and, you know, no, oz no ozone, no UV in the tank. And I was able to take care of this little kid while I was doing all that stuff. So ChemiClean has been dosed and I will kind of come in intermittently and you can see exactly how it's going. This is the tank 24 hours after dosing ChemiClean. You can see the sand is looking amazing. Now the water is really, really cloudy, but that's because it's eating up all those, um, I guess, organics or whatever. And I am getting some tissue loss on the Walt Disney and this coral right here. I think that is the Worldwide Coral's yellow tip. I think it's due to this power head being directly pushing right over top of them. So I've kind of adjusted the flow. But other than that, very minimal damage to the corals so far. So in the sump, everything is kind of, you know, going crazy. Those filter socks are one day old. So this entire thing smells. I've been putting the quilt batting from the top into this little container because if they just come out completely red. So I'll put this on top and pitch it, but I'm kind of having to take the filter socks out now because they are just like red from all the cyano. It's right here, causing all sorts of trouble with me. I'm gonna take a little bit of before and after videos. 29 hours later, making sure that you guys can see everything in case it changes. 29 hours later. Pretty nice. All right guys, you can tell the water is really cloudy, but you can look at the sand bed and realize, holy moly, all this, you know, cyano is gone. I only had two issues. Now, the Worldwide Coral uh, yellow tip, and then this Walt Disney, you can kind of see. I mean, it's really cloudy right now in the, in the tank. I'm getting some, you know, STN, or actually I guess this would be RTN. I think what happened was this power head kind of just blew a little too hard on this. So after 29 hours, we're looking at all this, you know, saying it was essentially gone. And I've already changed out the filter socks and it's nasty. So what is my plan? Do I want to run it for 36 hours to go to the full 48? Well, my decision was made super easy because after I dosed this yesterday, my wife had prodromal uh, contractions, meaning we went to the hospital last night at eight o'clock and didn't get back until eight in the morning today. So with that being said, with my wife being pregnant and already having some contractions, um, do I want to risk it and wait until, you know, tomorrow and see what the heck happens? Or do I just want to get this out of the system now and make sure that I am as safe as possible for this tank and have it all ready to go for my son whenever he decides to come? I think doing a water change now and doing like a 40 to 50 gallon water change is going to be the best bet. Now I'm pretty sure I got almost all of it. There's like some little stragglers down there that I can suck up, but I'm pretty sure most of this cyano is completely gone. I mean, it's night and day difference. Now the good thing is, if I just do this water change now, if it comes back in a couple, um, you know, months or whatever have you, I can easily dose the um, Kimmy Clean and it will get rid of it almost instantly. I mean, 29 hours and I mean, look at that. There's like hardly any of that left. Now I'm going to suck it up. So my game plan is now to make this a three part series, identifying the problem because we found the problem, solving the problem, and then going to recover these corals. 
So let me get started with my game plan, which is 50 gallon water change, get all this stuff out of here, and then, you know, show you what it looks like in the morning, hopefully if I'm still here and not at the hospital. By the way, we gotta go to the hospital tonight at like 1 a.m. for a shot because she had to get a shot last night at 1 a.m. to help with the baby's lungs develop quicker because they thought she was gonna go into labor. So, fun time. Gonna be waking up at midnight and going to the hospital to get one shot and then come home. So you know it's gonna take like three hours because nothing ever is efficient at a hospital. All right, so with the magic of editing, you will see this tank after a huge 50 gallon water change. You can see my Walt Disney not looking good right there. Looks beautiful, but you can see the skin is gone. Some of the tissue is gone. Same with the yellow tip, Worldwide Corals yellow tip. All right, guys, the water's cloudy as heck, but I did the 50 gallon water change. It took about an hour because so I was siphoning up some of the stuff in the sand bed. And overall, I think things should be going a little bit better. Yeah, you can really see the cloudiness of that water. So I'm uh, going to be cleaning out the filter socks and bleaching them and running through the wash because, oh my gosh, the amount of red cyanobacteria that got in the filter socks was unreal. Now, what I plan to do is go to bed tonight and then wake up tomorrow and show you, you know, kind of what it looks like and uh, giving you more of a game plan of what I'm going to be doing on the recovery phase, which you're going to see in the next video. But for tonight, I'm going to be dosing 40 milliliters of Microbacter 7 just to add new beneficial bacteria into the tank and hopefully kind of jumpstart uh, the tank as far as balancing it back out. Man, this rock just looks so nice. That Zoa, all those Zoas, beautiful. Loving them. This is about 42 to 44 hours uh, since I first put Kimmy Clean in. And after 29 hours, I did my 50 gallon water change. And this is what it looks like 44 ish hours later. I mean, I can't even remember when my sand bed looked this white. I mean, it's done wonders. The only problem is the water's a little cloudy because the bacteria that I dosed from Microbacter 7 and I do have some, you know, RTN on some of those corals, which I think I could equate to them being stressed and having this pump, you know, kind of blasting at them. And it kind of just, yeah, it didn't do them any good. You can see right in between those two corals where Dory just swam, there's a little hair algae left. Not much, I was surprised. I think what happened was my cleanup crew, these little snails, there was a bunch of hair algae up there, really couldn't get to all the algae because there's so much cyano kind of covering and coating everything that it made it hard for everyone to kind of do their job for the cleanup crew. But now that all the cyano is gone, you know, my cleanup crew is actually working out pretty well. All right guys, so that is how I solved my cyano and hair algae problem. Well, diagnosed it and attempting to solve it. Now there are some issues. You can tell that these corals just look horrible. They're so pale. This coral has like some STN on it. And obviously the corals over here, you know, not looking good. The acros didn't fare too well on this. Everything else, you know, didn't do too bad. That just looks beautiful, especially with the white sand. Wow. So everything else turned out really well. I'm pretty happy with how this went. Could I have done things differently? Yeah, I could have diagnosed the problem a little bit earlier and we could have figured out what the heck was going on. But found out it's a biological problem, not a, a chemical problem. So no chemistry would have addressed this, like the Brightwell Purit, but only biology could address this. Now we gotta go into reef tank restoration mode. So that'll be the next video. The next video is gonna be all about bringing this reef tank back to life. You can see the pulp extension is slowly coming back. But yeah, I'm gonna have to do some major, major feeding on this. So because of my nutrients got all out of whack, getting zero nitrates, 0 0.06 or 0 0.03 um, phosphate, the nutrients were getting all like taken up by the cyano and by the hair algae. It was all kind of out of, out of whack. So I had to address the problem in two different ways. One, address the hair algae, and two, address the cyano. First, I should have addressed the cyano. I was trying to address the hair algae, and because I was trying to address the hair algae, the cyano went out of whack. I should have addressed the cyano first and started dosing 
some bacterial supplements like, like Microbacter 7, after I did a chemi clean, something like that. So, I am now going to have to figure out what I need to do to keep my nutrients low and, well not low, bring my nutrients up, but also combat any hair algae that might arise in the tank. So the next video in this series is going to be how I'm bringing these corals back from the brink, all the pale nastiness and some loss of tissue on the underside if you can see that, yeah. Bringing them back from looking not too good to looking pretty stellar like they used to and get all these coral, co these colors got to come back. These colors are very drab right now. So I got a plan for that and you need to stick around for the next video that's going to come out probably in about a week or two talking about what exactly I'm going to do to address this issue. Long story short, it was a biological problem, I needed to fix biology. I also needed to bring up some of those nutrients but also battle hair algae. By addressing cyano, I was able to um, kind of knock back the hair algae and let all my cleanup crew members and my tangs do their job.